Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning as coronavirus cases continue to increase nationwide, millions of Americans are still traveling for the holidays despite pleas from health officials to stay home. Outside with live cam. Well, of course, it's the day before Christmas Eve and Mother Nature's like, nah, it's more like May or June around here. <laughs> Mid 60s, not much of a temperature drop overnight. Bet the clouds had something to do with that. We'll check with Justin in just a sec. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is December 23rd. Thanks for joining us. And yes, it's like a San Antonio Christmas. Right it now. is. Uh, the furnace didn't kick on last night. I wound up no. opening the windows and still was hot last <laughs> night. Uh, I know I'm bit. complaining a little bit and it's early for that, but just Justin, help me That's out. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, we will. There's a front tonight. We'll get rid of all this humidity and Thank this. You warmth. Uh, the humidity return this morning was, was impressive. And that's why temperatures are as warm as they are. 65 right now. We'll take care of that tonight with a strong front. By tomorrow morning, it's going to feel vastly different. Gusty winds, much, much colder. So here are the weather headlines. Morning clouds. It'll be warm today. We'll get temperatures up into the 70s. But then by tonight, windy and much colder as cold front comes through. We think that'll be around dinner time. And then by Christmas morning, we're talking about a freeze. Temperatures down near 30 here in San Antonio. So that's the change that we have to look forward to. In the meantime, 65 degrees at the airport, 64 Canyon Lake, 61 Kerrville, 62 right now in Bandiera. So it is a muggy, warm morning. Patchy fog, a little bit of drizzle to start. We'll lose some of those clouds this afternoon and make it up to about 76. We're going to time out this front for you, let you know exactly what you can expect on Christmas Day. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. We got to check in on the traffic. I saw about three cars this morning, Nick. What's the situation now? Yeah, three cars just make it two. All right, well, everyone, hope you're having a great uh, start to your Wednesday morning here. Right now, not a lot going on. My friends at Transguide said no accidents, no construction, smooth ride if you're headed to work. Let's take a look at some drive times here. All right, if you're coming in south from uh, 35 from the city of New Braunfels, you got a 28 minute ride. You're coming in uh, north from Pleasanton off 37, 31 minutes. Don't look bad there at all. All right, 10 at Proband right now, looking good. 10 at Callahan. Going very smoothly and we'll do one more here. Let's see what we have at 37 and Jones on the southeast side looking great. Mark Steph back to you. Thank you, Nick. Good to have you here this morning. Thank you, sir. Two healthcare workers in Idaho experiencing severe allergic reactions after receiving the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine. One person's recovered, but the other remains hospitalized. Meanwhile, millions of Americans are traveling during the holidays. That's despite warnings from health experts to stay home. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. As millions of Americans await long overdue stimulus checks, President Trump now says he will not sign the COVID relief bill overwhelmingly passed by Congress late last night, insisting that the one-time payment to individuals be increased from $600 to $2,000, among other changes. I'm also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation and to send me a suitable bill. The president mostly referencing items that weren't in the COVID relief bill, but rather the larger government funding bill. As for increasing the individual payments, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeting her support, writing Democrats are ready to bring this to the floor this week by unanimous consent. Let's do it. This all comes as we close out what's on track to be the deadliest month in this country since the pandemic began. More than 51,000 Americans died from COVID-19 in just the first three weeks of December. And Dr. Doctors fear we're headed for another post-holiday surge in cases and hospitalizations. What we saw after Thanksgiving, we're probably going to see worse after Christmas. Right now, many hospitals are being pushed beyond their breaking points. In this video recorded by The Washington Post, you see patients filling the hallways at one of the many overwhelmed hospitals in California. I think it's only going to get worse before it gets better. Now in New York, officials are testing to see if a new strain of the virus that may be even more contagious and is rapidly spreading in the UK has made it to our country as more research is done on this new mutation. Viruses mutate all the time. That doesn't mean that a vaccine won't work. Now both Pfizer and Moderna are testing their vaccines to make sure they're effective against the new strain. And there's new optimism about the availability of vaccines. The New York Times reports Pfizer is in negotiations with the U.S. government to deliver as many as 110 million doses between April and June of next year. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. In Bear County, the latest report shows that 1,717 new coronavirus cases were reported in a single day, along with 11 new deaths. Our seven-day moving average remains above 1,000 cases reported every 24 hours, and the strain on our hospitals is increasing as well. 
and we already are yes. exceeding our staff capacity because we've had to have almost 700 pay, uh, 700 nurses come in to to supplement what we've what we've got here locally so i mean we're we're already having to to pull triggers in the hospitals to cope with the volume of patients that we already have this morning, 912 COVID-19 patients are in local hospitals. More than 15% of all staffed hospital beds have a COVID-19 patient. If that continues for seven days, many local businesses would be forced to operate at 50% capacity per Governor Greg Abbott's orders. Right now, the state is in phase 1A of distribution. Only frontline health care workers and residents at long-term care facilities are being included in the vaccination process. Phase 1B is next. Those would be for 65 or older. Those who are 16 or older have chronic medical conditions. Some of those include cancer, heart conditions, organ transplants, obesity, and pregnancy. As for when this next phase would start, it could be a few more weeks. And time now is 436 and 65 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, there is not much time left to get your Christmas packages where they need to go. What you can do if your items are stuck in the mail. Plus, President Donald Trump releases a new wave of pardons as he counts down his final days in office. And we're counting down to Santa and his team of reindeers arrival in the skies over San Antonio and South Texas. We'll get an update on that Christmas forecast from meteorologist Justin Horn. You're watching GMSA on a Wednesday morning. And welcome back. It is 439. Less than 24 hours after Congress passed the $900 billion COVID-19 relief package, President Donald Trump is wanting some changes made. The president is asking Congress to amend the bill and increase the planned distribution of $600, $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. The president also asked Congress to rid the legislation of items he calls wasteful and unnecessary. His message is even getting support from two of his longtime political foes, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. But some political analysts say President Donald Trump's message is unlikely to kickstart new talks on the measure, which passed with veto-proof majorities. Meanwhile, President Trump plans to issue full pardons for at least 15 people. The president is also commuting part or all of sentences of five others. Some of the pardons include George Papadopoulos, a former Trump campaign aide who let, lied to authorities during the Russia investigation. Also on the list, former U.S. Congressman Duncan Hunter. He was sentenced to 11 months in prison for his misuse of more than $200,000 in campaign funds for personal expenses. The four Blackwater guards involved in the Iraq massacre will also be pardoned. The president is expected to issue more pardons in the last few weeks of his term. A new study suggests pregnant women are unlikely to pass coronavirus to their newborns. Researchers from Harvard Medical School studied 127 pregnant women admitted to three Boston hospitals this year. 64 of them tested positive for COVID-19 and none of their babies did. Researchers detected the virus in respiratory fluids, but not in the bloodstream. The study also found that protective antibodies did not get passed down to the infants, leaving them at risk for possible infection. Doctors say more research is needed on that topic. Our San Antonio Spurs are in Memphis where they'll open the 2020-2021 season tonight against the Grizzlies. Derek White is out. He comes back from left toe surgery and Quindari Witherspoon is a no-go because of left knee surgery. That means second-year guard Keldon Johnson or second year guard forward Keldon Johnson, who missed the preseason with a foot injury, is good to go. Uh, Keldon said he stubbed a toe while running up his steps about three weeks ago. His foot slipped and he jammed his toe on a step, causing him to sprain it. The game between the Spurs and Grizzlies goes down tonight, 7 o'clock, FedEx Forum up in Memphis. So the race for SACE begins again. All right, go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. <laughs> Time now is 441 and 65 degrees. The pandemic combined with kids being out of school can be disruptive, not only to your sleep habits, but to your child's as well. Up next, easy things you can do to make sure everyone is catching enough Z's. Also next, what consumers can do if they are still waiting for Christmas packages to arrive in the mail. And welcome back, it's 444. Time is running out for those Christmas gifts to get to where they need to be. And what if yours is stuck in the mail? ABC's Becky Worley with answers in this morning's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, will you get your packages by Christmas? From online warehouses to package hubs to the last mile of delivery, this morning the shipping system strained to the breaking point. Analyst Ship Matrix estimates that 7 million packages have been delayed this holiday season. With packages still en route and Christmas two days away, what should consumers do about their gifts? It might be time to get creative about your gifting options. There are some options for improving your odds of receiving that delayed delivery. Many carriers will let you sign up for real-time updates via text, but with this much volume, tracking software can be a little off. Tracking isn't necessarily being updated in real time. It is possible that you'll get a nice surprise on your doorstep. And coming up at 7 a.m., what you need to know if your packages are stuck in the mail. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Between remote work and learning and pandemic-related stress, not only are adults experiencing sleep difficulties, kids are too. 12 on your side Marilyn Morris with some ways to help your kids get their vital sleep time. I will take care of the place for you. Smiley Sanchez's kids were good sleepers, but the pandemic changed everything. I was putting them to sleep between 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. In the morning, they were exhausted again. So it was, it was really, really hard for them and for me to, to get everything settled and to have a regular sleep time the way we had it before. It's not just the long-term health impact of the coronavirus that's unknown. It's also the impact of the new normal, changes in eating habits, exercise, and the big one, disrupted sleep routines. According to the journal Pediatrics, sleep-deprived children are at risk of increased weight and developing type 2 diabetes. Getting enough sleep is so important. Along with exercising regularly and eating a healthy diet, it can help manage stress and reduce anxiety. And it may help maintain a strong immune system, which is really important right now. Experts say set a sleep routine, go to bed and get up about the same time every day. And during the day, get outside. Regular physical activity has been linked to sounder sleep. It can boost the effect of sleep hormones like melatonin, especially if done bright and early in the morning. And limit nighttime screen time. Blue light from screens can slow the production of natural sleep hormones. So try to limit video games, computer, tablet, and phone use at night. A simple solution, dim the lights and read a good book. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I have a problem with the books, though. When I'm reading her book, I'm the one that's falling asleep <laughs> instead of her. So, so it sort of worked. Yeah, on me, but not on my child. It's 447. Let's see what's going on with traffic right now. Uh, are we expecting heavier traffic today, lighter traffic, maybe a combination, Nick? I think around uh, 10, 10 a.m. mark to, you know, uh, 7 p.m. It's going to be a lot of traffic there. Last minute Christmas shoppers, that's okay because I'm one of them too. All right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen here. Nothing going on uh, right now. No construction. If you are headed to work this morning, expect a smooth ride. Things are looking good out there. Let's go straight to Trans Guide here. All right, 10 at Proband. That's looking good. 10 at Callahan East. Both east and westbound lanes flowing very smoothly. 37 at Jones. That looks good on the southeast side right there on that left hand lane. And we'll do one more. I 10 at West Avenue with you call central side of town. That's looking very good as well. Well, it is super humid out there this morning, Justin. Yeah, one of the warmest spots in the country at this moment, San Antonio. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, we're at 65 degrees. We've got humidity surging and cloud cover. That's keeping temperatures up this morning. You can't see it there on the corner of your screen, but Miami is sitting at 62. So yes, we are one of the warmest spots in the country for now. That doesn't hold because we'll get a frontal boundary. You can see it here. And this is all the cold air that's going to be headed in our direction. So 28 right now, Denver, it's 18 in Casper. And uh, this cold front will be here by this evening. Uh, you can see some of the snow associated with that up across uh, the Plains, Bismarck, uh, Minnesota, uh, they're going to see some of this uh, snow as it moves east and a little bit of rain with that too. We're not looking for any precipitation, unfortunately, with this front. It's going to be another dry front. But we are getting a couple of showers, uh, mainly around Victoria, far eastern counties this morning. There could be a little bit of drizzle to start today, maybe some patchy fog as well. As we go outside for you right now, 65 degrees, cloudy at the airport, southerly winds at about 8 miles per hour, and of course humidity is way up there. Winds aren't so gusty just yet. Visibility wise, doing pretty good here. We're down to about five miles in Castroville. And Kennedy is reporting a little bit of fog. Same uh, story down there in Beeville too. So certainly 
Uh, some fog just like yesterday will be possible. 64 Gonzalez, 66 in New Braunfels, 64 Hondo. It's warm. This is this is spring like air that we've got in place right now. And a, a large reason for that, a big reason for that is the dew points surging into the 60s this morning. Uh, the dew point right now here in San Antonio, 61. That's what you would see in the springtime. Uh, wind gusts. Again, not so bad right now, but we are seeing a few gusts up there around Fredericksburg and Rock Springs, 16, 17 miles per hour. That'll pale in comparison to what we're going to see tonight. Once this front comes through, we could see gusts 40 to 45 miles per hour overnight. So uh, we always say this during the, uh, the holidays, but if you have some of those inflatables in your front yard, make sure they're staked down because they will blow away and winds like that. Uh, it'll be breezy tomorrow too. So the forecast wind chill when you wake up tomorrow morning, this is around seven o'clock, likely in the twenties. I think it could be even colder than that, depending on the wind speed, uh, but wind chills will be in the teens even in the hill country. So vastly different tomorrow morning. Here's what the forecast looks like rain wise. And again, not much. We're going to get some clouds today. They clear out. Here comes the front by say six, seven o'clock this evening. And then behind it, you get the northerly winds kicking in and those temperatures uh, really do fall off behind the front. So for today, uh, 60s to start, maybe some patchy fog and drizzle. Then we're up to 76 for a high. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Once that front comes through, though, temperatures fall off to 34 overnight with clear skies uh, tomorrow morning. And then uh, 58 Thursday tomorrow, we'll see uh, sunny skies, but we'll struggle to get out of the 50s. Friday morning, I think we fall down to 30, a widespread freeze, 65 for Christmas Day. Santa's going to love that weather, nice and chilly. 66 Saturday, little disturbance rolls through, maybe a sprinkle, but not expecting much rain. Warms up on Sunday, we get another front Monday. And then maybe, just maybe, some decent rain chances as we get into next week. We'll keep, keep you posted there. Pretty active weather pattern. And uh, chilly weather for the for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, guys. I'm glad we have appropriate weather for Santa and not the warm weather we have this morning. I agree. Justin, I agree. you really want to get people's attention? Start calling tonight's front or the front later today the Polar Express. Oh. That's not a bad yeah, starting idea. Starting next half hour. <laughs> I like it. Okay. We'll create an animation and <laughs> have a whole different show for it and everything. It'll be a whole thing. Yeah, yes. it will yes. be a whole thing. 452, 65 degrees. And coming up next, Christmas can't come soon enough for Wonder Woman fans, plus more details on the new Soprano series debuting on HBO Max. And taking a look at lotto numbers, let's look at pick three. One, six, seven, Fireball H. Daily four numbers, five, four, two, two, Fireball nine. Cash five, we have one, 12, 17, 23, 28. And your Mega Millions, 29, 53, 56, 59, 67, Mega Ball 21, Mega Plier two. Good luck. Superhero fans counting down the days to the debut of the new Wonder Woman movie. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Life is good, but it can be better. And why shouldn't it be? Only two days until many get to open the Christmas present that is Wonder Woman 1984, the sequel to the 2017 blockbuster starring Gal Gadot, who says this time around, Wonder Woman is a little more emo. She's very lonely. Uh, she lost all of her friends, all of her team members, uh, you know, along the years. And she doesn't want to engage with anybody because she doesn't want to experience the loss and she doesn't want them to discover that she's immortal and she doesn't old and age and all of that. Wonder Woman 1984 is in theaters and streaming on HBO Max Christmas Day. Speaking of HBO Max, that's where the upcoming Sopranos prequel movie will also air. And star John Magaro says watching Michael Gandolfini step into the role originated by his father, James Gandolfini, was amazing to watch. He never watched the series until he got the job. And then he spent, you know, a week or two, whatever, watching his dad, you know. I mean, I, I don't even know how you do that. The Many Saints of Newark will be out March 12th. Come in, Ether. This is Barbo Observatory. Are you receiving this? Out today, George Clooney's latest film, he stars in and directs the sci-fi thriller The Midnight Sky, which you can watch on Netflix. And hopefully he's not spending his birthday in the Upside Down. Stranger Things star Finn Wolfhard is 18 today while Pearl Jam frontman Eddie Vedder is 56. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Yeah, big Sopranos fan, and I've got many Saints of Newark on my calendar for March 12th. David Chase, the creator of the show, said that it was uncanny 
how well Jim Gandolfini's son did in that role playing the younger really? uh, Tony Soprano. That'll be yeah. interesting. It's in be March? March 12th. And you already have it marked. <laughs> I do. I do. But uh, 457, 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA. And still ahead on GMSA is President Donald Trump threatening to torpedo the massive COVID-19 relief package. We'll look at the sudden changes to the bill he's demanding and what that means for Americans. Are the kids expecting a new Xbox or PlayStation this Christmas? How about one of these from KFC? We'll tell you if the chicken chain is getting into the video game console wars ahead in Tech Bytes. Mm. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A good morning. The announcement comes as President-elect Joe Biden is calling the current bill a down payment and says he'll push Congress to give Americans more aid once he takes office. And outside with a live cam on your super early Wednesday morning, Mother Nature messing with us this morning. It's get really warm and muggy now, but wait till you see this whopper of a cold front on the way. It is not playing around. And good morning. It is Wednesday, December 23rd. Thanks for joining us. And yes, it's a little humid this morning. It feels more like, I don't know, September than December. Yeah, mid 60s yeah. for sure is kind of a jarring change from some of the colder temperatures we've been seeing around here in recent weeks. But Justin says, oh, just wait. Just wait. Yeah, the uh, the Polar Express is headed our way. That's Mark's term, not mine, but it is going to move in tonight. We got a strong cold front. Uh, that'll make a big difference. 65 degrees right now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the warmest spots in the country at this hour with southerly winds at about nine miles per hour. Dew point is at 61. This is very spring like we've got some fog and a little bit of drizzle out there. Visibility good in most areas, although we're seeing some fog right there around Del Rio and then down there towards the Victoria area. We'll keep an eye on those numbers this morning. If we do get some spots where the fog gets a little bit dense, we'll let you know. As far as the radar goes, we are picking up on some showers well east of us, mostly towards the Houston area. We could get a little bit of patchy drizzle here and there. So far, not a lot of reports of that, though. 65 degrees at the airport, 64 Randolph, 63 stints and 65 Canyon Lake is warm everywhere. It's cloudy everywhere, and these clouds will stick around through about midday. And then we'll see the sun come out, and those temperatures really do warm up. 76 degrees. The high temperature suddenly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. It all changes abruptly tonight with a cold front. Some very strong winds. We're going to detail that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Nick now. Everything looking good this morning, Nick? Oh, definitely, Justin. Not a lot going on at all right now. If you are headed to work, just look at that. No heavy pockets of traffic, no red parts or orange on the screen, a lot of green. Always good news there. Let's take a look at some drive times here. All right, so I think this is Bolverde. Okay, so if you're coming from Bolverde Road to 1604, which is southbound, you got an eight minute ride. You're coming back northbound from 1604 up to Bolverde right now, eight minutes as well. Looking good there. All right, drive times 37 at Jones. I like 37 at Jones. Southeast side looks good right now. What else do we have here? 10 at West Avenue. That looks great, flowing smoothly, and we'll do one more. Let's see what we have. I 10 at Woodlawn going towards downtown and going back towards 410. Looks great. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Two people are in the hospital after gunshots rang out very early this morning over on the west side. Or Max Massey joins us live from the 200 block of Remolino. Max, what are police saying about this shooting? Good morning, guys. Well, police right now treating this like it could be an accidental shooting, and they're actually telling us that it may be a teenager who pulled the trigger. I'm going to step out of the way, show you what we are looking at here. Caution tape actually blocking off portions of this road, and then just behind us, we can see at least six police cars on the scene. Investigators actually going in and out of the home behind us, right past the caution tape. And this is what we know right now. Police tell us around 2 this morning, a 16-year-old fired one shot. That one gunshot actually hit a 19-year-old man in the head. Didn't stop there, though. The bullet exited the victim's head and then hit an 18-year-old woman in the leg. Both victims transported to Bamsey. Right now, their condition is unknown at this time. We are told, though, that the gun belonged to a family member. Police, though, still investigating, still trying to figure out what exactly led up to this event. Now, guys, this is clearly a very fluid situation. We're going to be here on the scene throughout the morning, bring you any more um, information as it becomes available. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Max. 504, big announcement by the president on Twitter overnight. President Donald Trump asking Congress to rework the pandemic aid bill they passed Monday night and increase the direct stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. 
In a surprise four-minute Twitter video, President Trump demanding Congress amend a two-in-one COVID relief and government spending bill heading to his desk. The legislation crafted by Senate Republicans and Trump's own top negotiators. I'm also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation and to send me a suitable bill. Trump was expected to sign the measure this week to avoid a government shutdown and give a much needed lifeline to millions of Americans expected to lose part of their federal unemployment benefits the day after Christmas. But the president now saying he wants more money in direct stimulus payments included in the bill. Amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. The demand quickly embraced by many Democrats who for months had sought to give more direct aid to struggling Americans. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeting, let's do it. And Adam Schiff telling well, CNN this. I have to think that the Republicans are not going to go anywhere near this, um, but, but we're willing to try. Republicans have indicated the price tag of the $900 billion COVID relief package is already too high. The bill includes $300 in weekly federal unemployment benefits and up to $600 in direct payments to most Americans. But the long overdue aid now hanging in the balance while millions slide into a pandemic fueled poverty. It's time to stop playing that freaking game with our lives. People are dying. They're being evicted from their houses. They're, they're losing everything. It's unclear whether President Trump actually plans to veto the bill once it arrives on his desk. If he refuses to sign it, it would become law after 10 days. If he vetoes it, Congress could override it. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Today is expected to be a very busy day at San Antonio International Airport as people travel for the holidays. Of course, that travel comes at a time when coronavirus cases are surging across the country. Our Samuel King joins us now live, and those airports are already busy, right? Yeah, we've had thousands of people fly out of San Antonio over the past few days. In fact, more than 8,400 on both Friday and Saturday, and around 7,900 on both Sunday and Monday. And while that's pretty busy for pandemic times, that's still about half of what the airport sees during normal times. Airport also expects to see a number of military personnel heading home for the holidays today. Officials are reminding people to practice social distancing at the airport. They also say that masks are required inside the airport and on flights. Director of Airports Jesus Sainz tells me safety is the top priority. We are here with open arms doing all possible uh, when you do arrive into our facilities to make it as seamless as possible for you. The airport and airlines have launched a number of ways for making the process of checking in the flights or paying for food or parking touchless. They've also stepped up cleaning procedures, of course. Now, they advised those flying out today to double check with the airlines before coming to the airport. There is some weather in other parts of the country and also arrive early. Even with fewer passengers than normal gears, the lines may still be a bit long. Mark? Thank you, Samuel. More local pharmacies and clinics, or clinics rather, are ready to accept shipments of the COVID-19 vaccine, not only in San Antonio, but in smaller surrounding communities as well. Atascosa County expecting 1,200 doses for its four facilities. 500 doses of Moderna's vaccine are allotted for quality urgent care in Pleasanton. We just feel it's an honor to be there for the community and the, in our country, really. HEB pharmacies throughout Texas will be receiving thousands of doses of the Moderna vaccine later this week. 44 of those pharmacies are in Bear County. CVS also preparing for their own administration process. And time now is 508 and 65 degrees. Move over PlayStation 5. Make way for KFC's video game console. We'll tell you about it coming up. And at this time of year, combined with added stress from the pandemic, can have anybody feeling at least a little anxious. Coming up next, a look at what anxiety does to your body and some ways to help ease your mind. And a strong cold front is going to roll through here like a train later on today. We get an update on the Polar Express with Justin Moore <laughs> coming up. The holidays, online work and school, and the pandemic. It's no wonder 40 million people, they say they're suffering from anxiety overload. So how can you ease your symptoms? Our Devin Clark reports. Millions of Americans are out of work, socially distanced, and stressed, and it's a recipe for anxiety. 
definitely the school aspect for sure. The Zoom, having a proctored exam and things like that is just... Making sure I have a mask, making sure that they're clean. Nearly half of Americans say that the coronavirus crisis is harming their mental health. And studies show disorders like anxiety can also have an impact on your physical well-being. In fact, 28% of people who suffered dizziness also had a form of anxiety. Other symptoms may include a rapid heartbeat, nausea, fainting, and muscle tension. To combat anxiety episodes, experts say exercise for at least 30 minutes every day. Try to get between seven and nine hours of sleep each night. Limit caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine intake. Practice relaxation techniques like yoga or meditation. Also, you might want to try acupressure. Studies show it can reduce anxiety. Of course, if your symptoms are severe, see a mental health expert. Helping ease your anxiety, I'm Devin Clark reporting. All right, time right now is 513, 65 degrees. We're doing all sorts of stuff over yes, here. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> behind the scenes stuff. Still ahead, more details on a failed deal between merging Tesla with Apple. And is KFC really getting into the video game console wars? We'll find out next. Smooth driving pays off. With Allstate, the safer you drive, the more you save. You've never been in better hands. Halston, click or call for a quote today. Your ring should shine the same way you do. Shop exclusive styles from our collections, including Vera Wang Love, Enchanted Disney, Endless Brilliance, and so much more. Shop online with a virtual consultant, exclusively at Zales, the diamond store. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, I thought it was still I know sparkling water. It's sparkling! Call it a megatech merger that never happened. Tesla could have become a part of Apple, but the Dever deal never really got started. ABC's Will Reeve has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the big tech deal that wasn't. Tesla's Elon Musk says he wanted to sell his company to Apple three years ago during the darkest days of Tesla's Model 3 rollout, but he claims Apple's Tim Cook refused a meeting. Musk's comments came amid reports Apple is working toward vehicle production in 2024. And Twitter says the incoming Biden administration will take control of the at POTUS Twitter account on January 20th, but the Biden team will not inherit the account's 33 million followers. That's a change from 2017 when President Trump got the account. Finally, KFC says it's getting into video games with the KF console. The company says it will be able to keep your fried chicken warm while you're gaming. Suspiciously, there's no release date, price, or any technical specifications to share just yet. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. <laughs> Wait, what? It keeps your fried chicken warm while, while you're, you're playing, playing games. Will they have one for pizza later? I don't know. That would be a large just... device. Who, who buys that? I don't know. I don't Maybe know. it's not for real. Nick, what do you think? I don't who, know. Who, uh, you who, know what, Mark? Are you going to keep my chicken warm while I'm playing the PlayStation 5? You're all, <laughs> you have my money there. That, <laughs> <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> keep the gravy. All right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen. Not a lot going on the roadways right now. Things look good out there. Let's go straight to Trans Guide here. 281 at St. Mary's North and Southbound look good right now. Traffic. Picking up, there's a little more cars in the street. 10 at Probent, looks great. And uh, let's do one more. We got 10 at Callahaney, still looking good. If you're headed to work right now, expect a smooth ride. Fair warning from our Justin Horn. Again, a lot of folks have those inflatables in their yards this time of year. And mm -hmm. some people have like tons of them, like six or seven of them. And nice displays, but I guess it's tonight we have to watch out. They can become the Goodyear blimp tonight. Uh oh. They yeah. just take right off. <laughs> they do. Be down the street before you know it. You got to be careful. Yeah, trash cans too. It's one of those nights where the wind's going to be howling. Once our front comes through, we can see some gusts up to 45 miles per hour. That's how strong this front will be. Right now, we've got cloudy skies, some hazy conditions out there, probably a little bit of fog trying to develop. 65 degrees at the airport, 63 Stinson, 65 at Kelly. A little bit of a breeze out there, so that may be what keeps fog at bay. Still, we're seeing some visibility a little bit lower in spots. 61 Bernie State, 64 right now at Hondo, 64 Canyon Lake, 66 in New Braunfels. 
Yes, these are the temperatures. Your eyes are not deceiving you. It is this warm uh, out there this morning. Uh, 59 Rock Springs, 55 in Del Rio. And this all has to do with the moisture surging and higher dew points this morning. Cloud cover that's really keeping temperatures up. We mentioned some of that fog. Places like Beeville seeing it down to a quarter of a mile. We're also noticing it now out near Del Rio where visibility is down to about half a mile. The dew point trend. Yeah, we're in the 60s today and then it just falls off a cliff with that front. We're going to get dew points in the teens tomorrow and even into tonight. Uh, so that is the big change. Radar shows us that we've got a couple showers, light showers well to our east. We're not picking up on much here and there could be some spotty drizzle, but we're not looking for uh, anything significant this morning. Now you notice the snow here across the plains that's associated with an upper level low that's moving through and it's behind it that we're seeing that cold air surge south with the cold front. 25 right now, Denver 17, Casper 0 and Cup Bank. These numbers will fall even more through the morning hours and that cold air is going to move right on down the plains and into Texas. Now we're not getting the full brunt of it. A lot of the cold air is going to miss us up to the north and east. Even so, Christmas Eve is going to be a fairly chilly day. We mentioned the wind gusts, somewhat breezy today, but it's tonight. Gusts potentially between 40, 45 miles per hour overnight, and then the winds will calm some as we get into tomorrow. Still maybe a little bit breezy, but uh, not as strong as they are overnight. Uh, the forecast wind chill tomorrow morning in the 20s. A lot of places will feel like it's in the 20s, if not teens in the hill country. So bundle up if you're going to be out and about tomorrow morning. It'll be vastly different than what we're seeing right now. As far as cloud cover goes, we'll see that through about midday and then skies will clear. We think the front will be here this evening, six, seven o'clock or so. And then uh, once it moves through, skies do clear out and then uh, you get the good northerly flow behind the front. So forecast for today, uh, we'll keep things cloudy through at least noontime. I'd say partly good, mostly cloudy around noon, probably 70 and then up to 76 for a high this afternoon, partly cloudy. Uh, tonight, dropping down to 34, no rain chance, but we've got the gusty winds, as we mentioned, and uh, clear tomorrow, but high of only 58. Notice the low temperature Christmas morning. We're down to freezing, 30, a widespread freeze, 65 for Christmas Day. Uh, should be pretty nice. We'll get some clouds maybe late in the day. A couple sprinkles on Saturday, no big deal, 60s and 70s over the weekend. Another weak cold front Monday and a rain chance on Tuesday. So a lot there in that seven day forecast. But the bottom line, cooler starting tomorrow. And again, of note, uh, you said we could see fog or drizzle this morning. It could be a little bit damp in spots. Yeah. I thought I saw a little precipitation on one of those transguide cameras uh, in this last check. Entirely possible. Good. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yep. 522, 65 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, details on a global Sweet Caroline sing-along, plus Denzel Washington is back on the case in a new psychological thriller. Here are your lottery numbers. By the way, nobody won mega. It's up to $352 million. Your pick three numbers 167 fireball 8 your daily four numbers 5422 fireball 9 cash 5 1 12 17 23 28 and Mega Millions, 29, 53, 56, 59, 67, Mega Ball 21, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. The official trailer is out for a new movie starring a trio of Academy Award winners. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Things probably changed a lot since you left. You still got to catch him, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not that much has changed then, huh? Denzel Washington is on the case in The Little Things. Fellow Oscar winners Rami Malek and Jared Leto also star in the psychological thriller about a search for a killer and the secrets from the past that search uncovers. The Little Things debuts on HBO Max January 29th. If we knew then what we know now, we wouldn't have done what we did. The Canadian documentary Inconvenient Indian spotlights the stories and struggles of indigenous people. Its director, Michelle Latimer, had claimed indigenous family roots, but recently backtracked on that claim and apologized, saying she hadn't confirmed her lineage with local elders. As a result, Canada's National Film Board is pulling Inconvenient Indian from upcoming film festivals, including Sundance. When Neil Diamond performs Sweet Caroline, everyone sings along. 
There aren't any concerts right now, so Diamond asked fans around the world to upload themselves singing the tune. The result, a global sing-along video posted to Diamond's YouTube channel. For fans missing the live show experience, it's... Singing Along in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Only one person missing from that video. I know. Officer Nick Solis. <laughs> he started laughing. <laughs> he's you know, during the commercial break, he's going to practice his bomb, uh, bomb, bomb. Not without Mike. Not without Mike Osterhey? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's, that's so sweet. You don't mean that. 527, 65 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why Americans may be getting one less package this holiday season now that President Donald Trump is wanting changes to the sim stimulus bill that was passed by Congress. Why many health professionals are pushing to make sure minority groups plan to get the COVID-19 vaccine. And San Antonio's first regular season starting today. We're going to show you an easy way to keep up with all things silver and black. That's just ahead. <laughs> Welcome back. It's just about 531 on Christmas Eve. 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 Yes. yes. Thanks for joining us. But it doesn't feel like it because it's a humid 65 degrees. But by this time tomorrow morning, whoa. Right, Justin? Yeah. That's right. Yes, it'll be very different. Very different. So it is warm. It's humid this morning. It's muggy. We've got fog, some drizzle. And then tomorrow morning, it'll be clear. It'll be windy. And we'll have wind chills in the 20s. So that's the big change. Uh, morning clouds warm today. Windy and much cooler tonight. Uh, with some gusts up to 45 miles per hour, by the way, with those winds. And then we're going to get a freeze Christmas morning. So it'll be really cold to start Christmas Day. We're likely going to see temperatures around 30 here in San Antonio. Got to point this out yesterday. Mount Cedar was at 1930. It was in the high category. Mold is low. It was trending down, so that was good. Probably still trending down today, but I'm afraid with this front tonight, it'll kick back up on Thursday or Friday, I should say. So just adds up there. We are very much into mountain cedar season now. Visibility down to about a quarter of a mile in Beeville. We're seeing some fog out to the west. Two places like Del Rio seeing visibility down about half a mile. No issues here in San Antonio. It's warm, as I mentioned, 65 degrees at the airport. Most places in the 60s this morning, and you can feel the humidity outside. That's resulting in some patchy fog, some patchy drizzle. We've seen that, it looks like, on a few Transguide cameras. And then we're up to 76 for a high today. So warm before the front comes through. Nick, are there any issues out there? It looks like we're seeing a little bit of moisture. Wow, everything looks pretty good here on the roadways, Justin. We're dealing with one accident at Prue Road and Leon Creek Greenway. Not affecting traffic. Looks like that's an accident. It's one vehicle accident. Other than that, things look good. Let's go straight to some dashboard drive times here. All right. If you're coming westbound in from Seguin to the city, city limits of San Antonio, you got a 31 minute ride. If you're coming southbound on 281 from Bolverde to San Antonio, 29 minutes. And here eastbound from the city of Bernie all the way to San Antonio, 26 minutes. Those are pretty good times there. All right. Right, taking a look outside of the transit guide, 1604 at Bandera on the northwest side looking good. 281 at 410 by the airport. A little blurry, but still looks great. And 35 at Judson on the north side, flowing smoothly both north and southbound lanes. Mark, Steph, back to you. Nick, thank you very much. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to figure out what led up to a shooting on the southeast side last night. SAPD says I got a call about a man who'd been shot in the arm near Southeast Military and I-37. They arrived at a Valero gas station and found the man had used a shirt as a tourniquet to control the bleeding. The victim then went to a hospital. Police are still looking for a crime scene, so that investigation is ongoing. Americans may be getting one less package this holiday season. President Donald Trump casting doubt over the stimulus bill passed by Congress. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Less than 24 hours after Congress passed the $900 billion COVID-19 relief package, a pothole appears at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. President Donald Trump also says he wants Congress to rid the legislation of items he calls wasteful and unnecessary. But some of the president's complaints about provisions, like international funds, are part of the omnibus spending bill, not the COVID relief bill. He has put Republicans in a bad spot who voted for this bill uh, and Americans who are expecting checks, albeit 
These are not huge checks. The president's message is getting support from two of his longtime political foes. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeted, at last, the president has agreed to $2,000. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer added, we're glad to pass more aid Americans need. Sources tell CNN Trump's message is unlikely to kickstart new talks on the measure, which passed with veto-proof majorities and which Trump earlier said he would sign. When he realizes that they're going to emasculate him by overriding his veto, he's going to sign the legislation. That's my prediction. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The U.S. Justice Department has sued Walmart, accusing it of helping fuel the opioid crisis through its sales practices. According to the Wall Street Journal, the suit claims that Walmart's cut rate prices on prescription painkillers drew in many customers. Managers then pressured pharmacists to work faster, hoping the customers would stay in stores and keep shopping. As a result, pharmacists found it difficult to turn away customers with invalid prescriptions. According to the lawsuit, Walmart pharmacies eventually became a leading supplier of addictive painkillers. However, Walmart filed a preemptive countersuit back in October. They're accusing the government of trying to scapegoat the company for its own failures. While travel is expected to increase this week because of the holidays, it's still likely to be down from last year. AAA says they are expecting about 34 million fewer U.S. residents to travel over the Christmas and New Year's holidays compared to last year. That's a decrease of nearly 30 percent. AAA says there are a lot of holiday travelers who are continuing to take a wait and see approach to their travel decisions because of the cases that are starting to rise. It says most people plan to drive to their destinations this year. Health officials are warning Americans to stay home for the holidays, but if they are planning to get together, they say keep it small and social distance. 536, 65 degrees. And still ahead, we are seeing more and more companies and people move to Texas. Why the college football playoff may be the next biggest thing coming to the Lone Star State. And next, an easy way to keep up with all things Spurs this season. We'll tell you about the KSAT Spurs newsletter. And taking a look outside with live cam, that's no joke. It's 65 degrees. Well, look at how drizzly it looks all of a sudden, <laughs> it too. It does. It does. Doesn't feel like Christmas yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're going to check in with Justin for changes after the break. Approaching 540, welcome back. San Antonio Spurs get their new regular season started tonight against the Memphis Grizzlies. And if you want to keep up with all things Spurs this year, don't forget to sign up for the free Spurs newsletter. RJ Marquez has a closer look at what you'll get. Good morning, everybody. This is RJ Marquez, and I just wanted to remind you about our free Spurs newsletter, which officially relaunched this week as the silver and black get ready for the 2020-2021 regular season. That's right, we are here, and we have got you covered with some of the latest news and analysis from the team. You're gonna to get to hear from Coach Pop, his thoughts on all things Spurs, and also get to hear from some of the players as well. We have a power rankings pulse. We have a scheduled look ahead. We also have a round ball round table, which includes Greg Simmons, Larry Ramirez, David Sears, and myself sort of breaking down that week's action. Maybe get a prediction or two as we get ready for what should be a pretty interesting new Spurs regular season. And we also got some great off the court stuff as well. Fiesta jerseys, we're gonna figure out when those are gonna be debuted here in the Alamo City. And also, we have got some pretty cool stuff when it comes to Manu Ginobili. Where in the world is Manu Ginobili? That is one of the segments. Where else are you gonna get a weekly newsletter that follows Manu Ginobili's uh, every move? Because we love Manu, he's one of the greats. Anyways, all you have to do is go to ksat.com, make sure you subscribe and uh, you will get this newsletter to your inbox every week. This is RJ Marcus. Hopefully you guys have a great week and happy holidays. Thank you, RJ, you too. Don't forget, uh, game between the Spurs and Grizzlies tips off tonight. And time now is 541 and 65 degrees. I accidentally read Steph's story. It's tonight at 7 at FedEx, so for <laughs> up in Memphis. Go Spurs, go either way. And are you a big Wonder Woman fan? We're going to tell you where you can get these new Wonder Woman shoes inspired by the latest movie. This essay Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union. Happy Holidays from the Randolph Brooks family and my family. We wish all service members across the world and veterans a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. Thank you for your service. 
More Americans are planning to get the COVID-19 vaccine based on two recent surveys. But vaccine distrust is still out there and health experts worry communities of color hit hardest by the virus may choose not to get protected from it. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more. Americans are expressing less reluctance about getting the COVID-19 vaccine based on two recent surveys. BC poll this week, more than eight in 10 Americans say they plan to take the vaccine. And Kaiser today announced 70%. So just vaccine confidence is surging. But the numbers are lower within the black community. Blacks and Hispanics are more likely to get infected, more likely to be hospitalized, and more likely to die from COVID-19 than whites. A new survey from the Kaiser Family Foundation found 35% of black adults said they probably or definitely would not get vaccinated. The black community, communities of color, we cannot sit on the sideline whereby other communities don't and they receive the added protection of the vaccine, that's only going to worsen our outcomes. 47% of black adults who say they won't get vaccinated cite distrust in vaccines in general, while 50% are worried they will contract COVID-19 from the vaccine. Among those speaking out to counter misinformation and distrust in the community, Dr. Leon McDougall, president of the National Medical Association. Uh, I highly recommend that we, when the, our turn comes up for the vaccine, that we receive the vaccine. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. In your morning consumer headlines, rideshare company Lyft says it will provide 60 million rides to and from vaccination sites for low-income, uninsured, and at-risk communities as vaccines roll out. The initiative will include transportation to and from their destination, as well as rides for their second and final dose. Lyft partnered with several organizations, including the United Way and the National Hispanic Council on Aging. National and local nonprofit partners will distribute ride credits to people who need them. The organization will also decide whether the rides are free or discounted. And you can walk around like a superhero in these new shoes this Christmas. Uh, Warner Brothers and Buy on Footwear have come up with the release of a one-of-a-kind performance and leisure shoe inspired by Wonder Woman's iconic costume. The shoe features a ruby red body with a classic golden W emblem. They also have a star-spangled pattern across the toe and come in adult and kid sizes. The adult shoe retails for $110.00. Children's pair is 60. A global release of the new Wonder Woman movie 1984 set for Christmas Day. From Elon Musk to Oracle headquarters in recent months, we're seeing more and more companies and people moving to Texas. And as Max Massey explains, the next move comes from the college football playoff. The college football playoff semifinal scheduled to be played at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena on January 1st, now relocating to the Dallas Cowboys Stadium in Texas. It's a move prompt by California's ban on spectators at sporting events because of this pandemic. So the college football playoff committee and the executive director, Bill Hancock, said that conference commissioners who make up the college football management committee and the Tournament of Roses mutually agreed to relocate this game because of the growing number of cases in Southern California. Now, the game in Dallas Will still be played in the mid afternoon window on New Year's Day. And the commissioner also said they are pleased that parents and loved ones will be able to see their students play in the game. Now, the Rose Bowl, known as the granddaddy of all college football's postseason games, has been played every year since 1916. Coaches and school officials with playoff contenders have actually complained about the Rose Bowl being unable to accommodate players' families because of California's COVID restrictions put in place as the state tries to fight the public health crisis that's straining their hospitals. In going so far as Notre Dame's head coach Brian Kelly even suggesting that if the Fighting Irish were to play in the Rose Bowl, the school would boycott it if the players couldn't have their families in attendance. So the Rose Bowl asked the state of California for an exemption for the restriction, but they were actually denied twice, including earlier this week. The restrictions have been in place since March. UCLA have actually been playing their home games at the Rose Bowl since November, including the regular season finale this past Saturday. And the commissioner said it has yet not been determined if the semifinal set to play at AT&T Stadium in Arlington here in Texas moved from California would still be called the Rose Bowl. The name is actually part of a licensing agreement and it's co-owned by the Pasadena Tournament of Roses and the city of Pasadena. Guys, back to you.
It's about 10 till 6. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Earlier it was green on the screen and now not so much. Uh, we've got an accident right now, Steph. Uh, just came out. Looks like it's northbound I-35 off rim to Eisenhower Road. All I have right now is that, but uh, could cause some traffic delay. Not yet. Keep that in mind if you're heading that way northbound at Eisenhower. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide now. 37 at Jones looking good on the southeast side still. Traffic flowing smoothly pretty much everywhere else around the city. 10 at West Avenue. That looks good there going into the city there central and 10 at Woodlawn getting a little foggy there on that screen. Be careful. 10 at Woodlawn looking good though. All right, thank you, Nick. And uh, right now it is 10 till 65 degrees waiting on those big changes and you're tracking temperatures right now. Yeah, we're, we're waiting on that change and it will come tonight. So if you're waking up this morning, walking outside and saying, whoa, this isn't December. What's going on here? Uh, we will get those changes. But right now, 65 degrees, one of the warmest spots in the country right here in South Texas this morning as moisture surged back in. But look at these numbers back behind the front. 25 Denver, 17 Casper. We're going to get some of this cooler air shifting in tonight. Some snow associated with this system up across the plains. We're not going to get any precipitation out of this, unfortunately. For us, maybe just a little drizzle this morning. That's it. There could be some rain off to our east. A little closer look at the radar right now. We are picking up on some light showers along the coast, but so far nothing here. Although, as Nick mentioned on some of those transguide cameras, it looks like there may be a little bit of moisture out there, and that's certainly possible. 65 degrees right now. Southerly winds at about 7 miles per hour. Cloudy skies, and as far as fog goes, not seeing much here in Bear County, although Port S.A. and Stinson starting to see some reduced visibility there. Same story in Castroville and uh, Del Rio still reporting some fog down to about half a mile visibility. Same story in Beeville. Temperatures plenty warm, as we mentioned, 61 Kerrville, 63 right now in Uvalde, 55 in Del Rio. That's actually one of the cool spots this morning in the dew points. One of the big reasons we're seeing this rise in temperatures. Uh, Two points in the 60s widespread. That's almost spring like not what you would expect in December. Tonight as that front comes through, winds are really going to pick up out of the north. We're expecting some gusts up to 45 miles per hour potentially as this front comes through. I think it's probably a small window which we see those very strong winds, but they will be there. You'll hear the wind howling overnight and as we get into Christmas Eve. Still some breezy winds, but not those big time gusts tomorrow morning. Very different start to our day. Uh, we'll have the gusty winds, we'll have the cooler temperatures. That means wind chills. Uh, it'll feel like it's in the 20s here in San Antonio. Could feel like it's in the teens up across the hill country. So that'll be tomorrow morning. As far as cloud cover goes today, we'll see the clouds to start. I think they'll uh, pretty much go away by the afternoon. So we'll be looking at uh, partly cloudy and mostly sunny skies. Then the front comes through. I'd say around dinner time, maybe uh, early evening. And then behind it, you get those strong northerly winds. So our forecast for today, we take it up into the 70s, 76 for a high. Clouds eventually sort of thin out. Then we get our front, and then the gusty winds kicking in uh, a little bit later tonight. And the temperatures will fall off pretty sharply, I think, as we get into tonight. In fact, by tomorrow morning, we're talking about temperatures in the mid-30s. Uh, with those windy conditions and then tomorrow with sunny skies high of only 58. We start off at 30 Friday morning, so don't forget to uh, bring in or protect at least some of those pets bring in or protect the plants bring in the pets. Got them switched there, but you know what I'm trying to say uh, 65 degrees on Christmas uh, looks pretty good. The winds will die down for Christmas Day and uh, even Christmas morning. It'll be nice and chilly. And then 66 Saturday, we'll get another week front Monday and we'll, we'll be looking for some rain chances, maybe middle part of next week, guys. Well, Justin, from here, I was looking at Santa, which I love. I love your graphics, but it Thanks. also looked like you had a pineapple on Christmas Day <laughs> behind you from the distance. From oh, distance. okay. Oh, is it the, the, the bag of, of... Well, no, it's the, the sun with the Christmas tree on top. Oh, I see. Yeah. see it? If I, I see, see it. yeah. There's well, from wins. far away, it kind of looks like a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I see that, no! <laughs> Thank you, Justin. I know it's a saying. tree. Yeah. 553, 65 <laughs> degrees. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers. Pick three, we have 167, Fireball 8, and Daily 4, 5422, two, Fireball 9. Cash 5 numbers 1, 12, 17, 23, 28. We also have your Mega Millions numbers. And nobody wants, so that jackpot's up to $352 million. Powerball tonight's 321. The number is 29, 53, 56, 59, 67. Mega Ball 21, Mega Plier 2.
Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the latest on the breaking news overnight. President Trump putting that massive $900 billion relief package on hold, demanding Congress increase those $600 checks to $2,000. What it means for millions of Americans waiting for that critical aid with Christmas just two days away. We'll have the latest on that, plus much more only on GMA. We'll see you all soon. With Christmas coming up, many families here in San Antonio are looking for ways to put some food on the table. That's why SA Live's David Elder is hosting the Merry Eats drive through Christmas event on Christmas Eve. 10,000 meals will be given out for free. It includes turkey and all the trimmings at Champions Park at Old Spanish Trails Park tomorrow from 10 to 6. For more information, go to KSAT.com. Coming up on GMSA, small businesses all over have been affected by the pandemic and even natural disasters this year like wildfires were just ahead on GMSA. How one community has managed to rally through goodwill by investing in itself. Trans Guide I-10 at Days of Allah. Officer Nick Solis is here tracking things. We're also keeping an eye out for fog and drizzle this morning on this Christmas Eve Eve. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Two people in the hospital this morning after what police are calling an accidental shooting. I'm here on the west side, I'll have the full update. A good morning. The announcement comes as President-elect Joe Biden is calling the current bill a down payment and says he'll push Congress to give Americans more aid once he takes office. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it really is December 23rd, trust me, believe me, even though it's 65 degrees out there, but things are going to change. We're going to check in with Justin right now. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, December 23rd. Thanks for joining us. And this morning is a no jacket morning. A little break, I guess. Yeah, mid 60s, muggy, and it looks like in the last hour or so we might have seen some fog or light drizzle start to show up at the spots around town. I feel like Steph just called out Max because in that shot he was just wearing a jacket. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even notice. Well, I didn't need a jacket when uh, I walked out. I, I kind of agree with you. We'll, we'll ask Max about Maybe it Maybe that was earlier in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, but it is warm out there. We've got temperatures in the 60s right now, a lot of moisture. We're, we're dealing with a little bit of drizzle in spots too, and Nick can speak more to that in just a second with some of the TransGuide cameras. But uh, some showers moving out towards Houston. Uh, we've got... Uh, Quiet conditions as far as radar is concerned here, but again, some drizzle and some fog certainly possible. We're seeing that out near Del Rio where the visibility is down about a quarter of a mile, close to zero in Beeville, uh, Pleasanton, uh, seeing some fog a little bit closer to the, the border there. And so uh, even visibility here in San Antonio is starting to come down some. We'll keep an eye on those numbers. 61 Bernie State, 62 Comfort, 66 in New Braunfels, 64 in Pleasanton. Plenty uh, warm out there with the uh, dew points surging this morning. Uh, we'll get up to about 76 later today. The skies will clear. We'll get some sun. It'll turn into a fairly warm day. But we've got those changes tonight. An early evening cold front moves through. Very gusty winds with this front. And we're going to see some much cooler temperatures, especially for uh, Christmas Eve. We're going to talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's go over to Nick now. Uh, I think we're starting to get some accidents showing up. Yeah, definitely a couple accidents out there, Justin. Two major accidents, too. So the first one we're dealing with here is a two-vehicle accident on the 1730 block of Commercial Avenue. They're on the south side of town. Looks like a vehicle's rolled over. Just came out. Get you more information on this when I can. Dealing with this one. Sorry, looks like we have there's two separate accidents here. There's four vehicles total. This is the northbound lanes of IH35 at uh, Eisenhower Road. They're all in the left lane there. Hero trucks are there, so traffic is getting blocked down already. We're seeing moderate traffic here in those northbound lanes. I expect that to go to very heavy traffic here in the next couple of minutes or so. Okay, trans guide right now. 10 at Callahan looking good. 37 at Jones, even better. Just remember, wear your seatbelt and please get to work safely. Mark Steph, back to you. Nick, thank you very much. Some of your brothers and sisters in blue are working to figure out what exactly happened that ended with two people in the hospital with gunshot wounds. Our Max Massey joins us live near downtown. And Max, what do we know about the shooting so far? Good morning, guys. Well, it appears police are treating this investigation as though it is an accidental shooting, and they tell us a teenager may be responsible. So take a look. This was video from around 2 this morning. This is actually the 200 block of Remolino. It's on the west side. Police there are telling us they believe a 16-year-old accidentally fired a gun and shot a 19-year-old man in the head, but it didn't end there. The bullet actually went through the man's head and then hit another person, an 18-year-old woman in the leg. 
Police say the gun may belong to a family member of that 16-year-old who fired it. Both the people who were shot were taken to Bamsey. We are still waiting for an update on their condition. Obviously, guys, this is a fluid situation. Police still working, still trying to figure out what exactly led to this gunfire, what exactly happened. And we are still waiting to learn what charges, if any, that 16-year-old will face. Stephanie, Mark. The Bear County Sheriff's Office needs your help finding a woman who disappeared last week on the city's south side. According to the Sheriff's Office, 52-year-old Tracy Lynn Hubmaster was last seen leaving her residence at around noon on December 12th in the 100 block of Carousel Drive in the Valley High area. Hubmaster has blonde hair and green eyes, last seen wearing a blue jacket. Investigators believe Hubmaster may be in the area of Loop 410 and Highway 90 West near the Westwood subdivision. If you have any information, contact the Sheriff's Office at 335-6000 or email missingpersons at bear.org. And now to the latest numbers of coronavirus cases here in Bear County. City officials are reporting 1,717 new coronavirus cases in a single day along with 11 people who died from the virus. Our seven day moving average remains above 1000 cases reported every 24 hours. Hospitalizations are increasing as well. This morning, 912 COVID-19 patients are in local hospitals. More than 15% of all staffed hospital beds have a COVID-19 patient. If that continues for seven days, many local businesses would be forced to operate at 50% capacity per Governor Greg Abbott's orders. In regards to the COVID-19 vaccine distribution, in the state right now, the state is in phase 1A of distribution. Only frontline healthcare workers and residents at long-term care facilities are being included in the vaccination process at this time. Phase 1B is next. That would include those 65 or older or those who are 16 and older and have chronic medical conditions like cancer, heart conditions, organ transplants, obesity, or pregnancy. As for when this next phase would start, it could be a few weeks more. More pharmacies and clinics are ready to accept shipments of the COVID-19 vaccine, not only in San Antonio, but in smaller surrounding communities as well. Atascosa County is expecting 1,200 doses for four of its facilities. 500 doses of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine were allotted for quality urgent care in Pleasanton. HEB pharmacies throughout Texas will also be receiving thousands of doses of the Moderna vaccine later this week. 44 of those pharmacies are in Bear County. CVS is also preparing for their own administration process. A surprising announcement by the President of the United States overnight on Twitter now putting that COVID relief package in limbo. President Donald Trump asking Congress to rework the pandemic aid bill they passed Monday night and increase the direct stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. Good morning. The hey, announcement Gabby. comes as President-elect Joe Biden is calling the current bill a down payment and says he'll push Congress to give Americans more aid once he takes office. In a surprise four minute Twitter video, President Trump demanding Congress amend a two in one COVID relief and government spending bill heading to his desk. I'm also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation. Trump was expected to sign the measure this week to avoid a government shutdown and give a much needed lifeline to millions of Americans. But the president now saying he wants more money in direct stimulus payments included in the bill. Amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000. The demand quickly embraced by many Democrats who for months had sought to give more direct aid to struggling Americans. Adam Schiff telling CNN this. I have to think that the Republicans are not going to go anywhere near this. Um, but but we're willing to try. The long overdue aid now hanging in the balance while millions slide into a pandemic fueled poverty. It's time to stop playing that freaking game with our lives. People are dying. They're being evicted from their houses. They're, they're losing everything. It's unclear whether President Trump actually plans to veto the bill once it arrives on his desk. If he refuses to sign it, it would become law after 10 days. If he vetoes it, Congress could override it. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Safety when it comes to coronavirus is top of mind at San Antonio International Airport today as people fly out to travel for the holidays. Our Samuel King joins us live now. And Samuel, how many passengers are they expecting? 
Well, they're expecting thousands, in fact, and they've seen thousands over the past few days. In fact, the airport says more than 8,400 on both Friday and Saturday and around 7,900 on both Sunday and Monday alone. And while that's pretty busy for pandemic times, that's still only about half of what the airport saw last year. And those numbers do include military personnel who are expected in large numbers today, just like Saturday, flying home for the holidays. Officials are reminding people to practice social distancing and wearing masks. They're required inside the airport and on flights. Director of airports, Jesus Sainz, says the surge in cases is a concern as people travel. We want these numbers to go down, and we are working closely with the administration to ensure that um, we do everything we can to, to keep everyone safe. For the airport, that includes stepping up cleaning procedures out there. And the airport and airlines have launched a number of ways to make the process for checking into flights or paying for food or parking touchless. Now, they do advise people to fly out, flying out to double check with the airlines before coming to the airports. No delays today but that could change later this afternoon and tomorrow. And even with fewer passengers than normal, the lines may be a bit long too because of social distancing, Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. 610, 65 degrees. This year, more people have been making their Christmas shopping online, but will the packages arrive by Christmas? The information on what to do if you are still waiting for yours, that is still ahead. Feeling anxious just ahead, what anxiety does to your body and ways to help ease your mind. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 65 degrees. I called it a no jacket caught kind of day, but Justin pointed out that Max was wearing a jacket, but I believe that's kind of like a windbreaker because of like the mist. So I'll stick with my argument, no jacket. <laughs> The holidays, online work and school in the pandemics. No wonder 40 million people say they're suffering from anxiety overload. So how can you ease your symptoms? Devin Clark reports. Millions of Americans are out of work, socially distanced and stressed, and it's a recipe for anxiety. Definitely the school aspect for sure. The Zoom, having a proctored exam and things like that is just making sure I have a mask, making sure that they're clean. Nearly half of Americans say that the coronavirus crisis is harming their mental health, and studies show disorders like anxiety can also have an impact on your physical well-being. In fact, 28% of people who suffered dizziness also had a form of anxiety. Other symptoms may include a rapid heartbeat, nausea, fainting, and muscle tension. To combat anxiety episodes, experts say exercise for at least 30 minutes every day. Try to get between seven and nine hours of sleep each night. Limit caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine intake. Practice relaxation techniques like yoga or meditation. Also, you might want to try acupressure. Studies show it can reduce anxiety. Of course, if your symptoms are severe, see a mental health expert. Helping ease your anxiety, I'm Devin Clark reporting. 615, 65 degrees. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Looks like there's a couple of accidents on your screen. Yeah, me and Sam have been busy over there. Three accidents within the last 20 minutes. Let's get right to it here. All right, major accident, Loop 1604 so at 37. So if you're going northbound 37, this entrance ramp to 1604 right here, we got a rolled over vehicle there. Then we got here, major accident, the 1730 block of Commercial Avenue, another rolled over vehicle where uh, all of South Bound Commercial Avenue at Pie Run Avenue is shut down right now due to this accident. Hopefully it gets cleared up soon. Then we got this major accident. Two separate accidents right now. Northbound 35 at Eisenhower Road. You can see here at this graphic, traffic is flowing at 12 miles per hour right now. So if you are headed northbound on 35, we're going to try to find you an alternate route to because you're going to be stuck in traffic for a little while. They're going up northbound 35 towards 1604. Trans guy, let's take a look at one. 281 at St. Mary's. That's flowing pretty smoothly. Looks good on 281 and 10 at Proband. Now, some of these cameras, looks like we are seeing some drizzle out there. Yes, and so I guess we'll need our rain jacket, but not cold weather jacket. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> a, little, a little damp out there. We're going to check in on some, some of that drizzle here in just a second. But before we go to weather, I want to show you some Aww. cute little friends that are up for adoption right now. This is... Hadel, I believe that's how you say it. He is up for adoption. And uh, he's an adorable terrier, American pit bull mix, who's ready to leap into your heart. He's super intelligent and trainable. Hadel loves dog companionship and is very social. And here we have Gabriel. He loves to cuddle and Pearl. He's 
purr. He is very friendly, a uh, very friendly feline and hopes to find his perfect home for the holidays. If you're interested in adopting Hadel, Gabriel, or any other pet at SAHS, just visit sahumane.org slash adopt. Some cute animals there. All right, uh, let's jump into weather now and we'll show you what's going on outside. We've got uh, some cloud cover, a little bit of drizzle, some fog and spots. And temperatures right now 65 degrees at the airport, 63 stents and 64 Kelly. And we've got uh, south southwest really winds at about seven miles per hour. Looking at some of those trans guide cameras, as we mentioned earlier, it does look like there's some moisture out there. So be careful if you're going to be out traveling. Uh, there is that potential of a few slick roadways. 61 degrees, Bernie State, 62 Comfort, 62 Rio Medina, 66 New Braunfels, 63 right now at Stinson with cloudy skies there. And then in the 50s out west, the moisture level is a little lower out here. The temperatures as a result a little bit lower, 15 Del Rio, but they're still seeing some fog. And look at the 24 hour temperature change. I mean, this is pretty impressive. Uh, we've jumped up 20 degrees from where we were 24 hours ago up 25 degrees in Kerrville from 24 hours ago. So a big increase in temperatures due in large part to that moisture uh, just really picking up today. And visibility down to close to zero in Beeville, Pleasanton, seeing a little bit of fog there. We're seeing the numbers come down somewhat in San Antonio, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of patchy fog here. We mentioned Del Rio down to about a quarter of a mile. Dew point trend. Yeah, the dew points are high today, but then when that front comes through tonight, it's like just falling off a cliff here. These dew points go into the teens overnight into tomorrow. So we get rid of the moisture very abruptly as that front comes through uh, later this evening. Radar is not giving us much. We had a couple showers off to the east around Victoria, but not much showing up here other than again some of that light drizzle. That storm system that's going to push the front through, it's producing quite a bit of snow across uh, the plains, places like the Dakotas, Nebraska. That's pushing east, and then behind it, you're getting the really cold stuff. 25 Denver, 34 Albuquerque, 15 Casper, 0 and Cup Bank. That cold air is going to move into Texas. We're not seeing the full force of it. I think a lot of the really cold stuff moves into the Midwest, but we're going to feel some of it as we go into tonight and tomorrow. Wind gusts, really the big story here. As that front moves through, we're going to see the winds pick up. Could see some gusts between 40 and 45 miles per hour tonight. It's a small window where we're going to see really strong winds, but be aware it is going to be howling overnight and by tomorrow morning with some gusty winds and colder temperatures, wind chill values. This is your feels like temperature will be in the 20s in a lot of spots, if not teens up there in the hill country. So for today, we lose some of the cloud cover by midday. Here comes our front. There are the changes clears out of the clouds. We'll see clear skies tonight into tomorrow morning and clear skies tomorrow. Uh, quite a bit of cloud cover to start today though, and then up around 76 for a high. Those winds kick in uh, tonight, dropping off uh, into the 60s and eventually 30s by tomorrow morning, 34 with those gusty winds. Extended forecast, 58 tomorrow, despite the sunny skies, we'll get down to freezing Christmas morning. I think a lot of places will be at or below freezing. And then the 66 Saturday, maybe a sprinkle or two, 74 Sunday. We'll get some rain chances next week, too. So busy forecast, but the bottom line here is windy tonight. Much cooler for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, guys. Very good. Very appropriate. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 620, 65 degrees. And the fast food chain now adding a new item to its menu. That's a game console. The details next. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. For skin as alive as you are, don't settle for silver. Seven moisturizers, three vitamins, 24 hour hydration. Gold Bond. Champion your skin. For skin that works as hard as you do. Don't settle for silver. Seven intense moisturizers to help stop dry skin before it starts. Gold Bond Healing Lotion. Champion your skin. No matter what sometimes keeps you up, Nature Made helps you win the night. Our extended release melatonin helps you fall asleep and stay asleep. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. Over time, you go nose blind to the odors in your home, but others smell this. 
That's why Febreze Plug has two alternating scents, and it eliminates odors for 1,200 hours. In this morning's GMA First Look, will you get your packages by Christmas? From online warehouses to package hubs to the last mile of delivery, this morning, the shipping system strained to the breaking point. Analyst Ship Matrix estimates that 7 million packages have been delayed this holiday season. With packages still en route and Christmas two days away, what should consumers do about their gifts? It might be time to get creative about your gifting options. There are some options for improving your odds of receiving that delayed delivery. Many carriers will let you sign up for real-time updates via text, but with this much volume, tracking software can be a little off. Tracking isn't necessarily being updated in real time. But it is possible that you'll get a nice surprise on your doorstep. And coming up at 7 a.m., what you need to know if your packages are stuck in the mail. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. The big tech deal that almost wasn't, or wasn't rather, Tesla's Elon Musk says he wanted to sell his company to Apple three years ago during what he calls the darkest days of Tesla's Model 3 rollout, but he claims Apple's Tim Cook refused to meet with him. Musk's comments came amid reports Apple is working towards vehicle production by 2024. And Twitter is reporting the incoming Biden administration will take control of the at POTUS Twitter account on January 20th, but the Biden team will not inherit the account's 33 million followers. That's a change from 2017 when President Donald Trump got the account. KFC says it's getting into the video games biz with a KF console. The company says it'll be able to keep your fried chicken warm while you're gaming. Suspiciously, there is no release date, price, or technical specifications to share just yet. Our San Antonio Spurs are in Memphis getting ready for their 2020-2021 home, uh, opener tonight against the Memphis Grizzlies. Derek White is out as he comes back from left toe surgery. Also out, Quindari Witherspoon because of left knee surgery. Second year guard forward Kelvin Johnson, who missed the preseason with a foot injury, will be in for the opener. Kelvin said he stubbed the toe running up his stairs about three weeks ago. His foot slipped and he jammed his toe on a step, causing him to sprain it. Spurs Grizzlies goes down tonight at 7 o'clock from the FedEx Forum up in Memphis. Go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. And time now is 626 and 65 degrees for now. As cases of coronavirus continue to increase, businesses keep seeing the economic impact. In our next half hour, how one community has managed to come back to life. And health officials are reporting more than 3,000 COVID-19 deaths in one day in the U.S. We're going to have the latest numbers next on GMSA. And checking the roads with TransGuy. Be careful, there may be some fog or drizzle out there. Big weather changes on the way. We'll get an update on the arrival time of that powerful cold front coming up right here on GMSA. As we get closer to the end of the year, we have a complete wrap of the most significant and newsworthy political news stories of 2020. And if you're just now waking up, it is much warmer out there. It's muggy. We even have some drizzle showing up. Justin Horn has a forecast coming up on your Christmas Eve Eve. Hi, good morning. It is third, no, Wednesday, December Wednesday. 23rd. I'm like trying to get to Christmas Eve, but we're actually at Christmas Eve Eve, Eve. today. Eve, yeah. right. Uh, let's check on, uh, see how things are looking right now. In the forecast, a very tricky forecast. Yeah, a lot going on today, tonight, and tomorrow because uh, of a cold front. We're going to start off warm this morning. Temperatures in the 60s, it's humid. We've got drizzle out there, a little bit of fog. Then tonight, we get a front moving through, windy and much colder, and then some freezing temperatures Christmas morning. So a little bit of everything here over the next couple of days. Mountain cedar still in the high category. This was yesterday's count. It was at 1930s, still causing a lot of issues, I know. We'll see what the numbers look like today. My hope is that they come down, but we've got that front. Once that moves through, they might jump back up. We'll see how that plays out. Visibility right now down close to zero in Beeville. Uh, places like Uvalde, Hondo starting to see a little bit of visibility issues. Del Rio down a quarter of a mile. That's where the fog is pretty thick so far. No big issues here in San Antonio. We mentioned the warmth. It's in the mid 60s right now. It's extremely humid out there. It does not feel like December at all. And the forecast for today will take us up to 76. So yes, a warm day. But that cold front means business and it brings about those big changes starting tonight. We're going to talk about some of those wind gusts coming up here in uh, just a few minutes. But let's get over to Nick now. 
I would imagine we've got a few slick roads out there that may be causing some issues. Yeah, Justin, definitely is. So three accidents, three major accidents, all with two with rolled over vehicles here. So let's get right to it. First one's going to be a major accident, Loop 1604 at IH 37. This is if you're going northbound on 37 right here, exit ramp to 1604. Looks like it's a rolled over vehicle. Hopefully that gets cleared up soon. We got this accident, the 1730 block of Commercial Avenue, where they shut down Commercial Avenue at Pyron Avenue. But hopefully this one is getting cleared up. I know wreckers are on scene dealing with this accident here as well. This is going to be northbound IH 35 at Eisenhower Road. The traffic flow right now on northbound 35 at Eisenhower is down to eight miles per hour. If you are headed in that direction, expect a huge delay. That remember that's going 35 northbound towards 1604. All right, taking a look at Transguide 10 at Woodlawn looking good right now, flowing very smooth and we'll do one more. Let's see what we got. We got 10 West at loop 1604 northwest side. Looks great right now. Mark Steph back to you. Thank you, Nick. San Antonio police say they'll need some answers. They're trying to figure out more about how a man ended up with a gunshot wound to the arm. He turned up at a southeast side gas station late last night. Our Katrina Weber is downtown with a live report. Now, Katrina, we understand the man took matters into his own hands when it came to getting help. Well, that's right, and it sounds like he did that literally. Police say that he fashioned his own tourniquet and then drove himself to a hospital. Well, they found out about this late last night around oh, just before 10 after that man stopped off briefly at a gas station near Interstate 37 and Southeast Military. Police say he had been shot in his arm, but had used the tourniquet to stop the bleeding. At some point before officers could get to him and get information, police say the man jumped back into his car and drove himself to Southwest General Hospital. But from there, he was taken by ambulance to a trauma center. Now, what police still don't know is where this shooting happened or who shot this man. So those are the answers they are looking for, and they hope to get those later from that man. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Thanks, Katrina. For the fifth time this year, the U.S. reported more than 3,000 deaths in one day due to the coronavirus. According to Johns Hopkins University, more than 3,200 COVID-19 deaths were reported on Tuesday. More than 322,000 Americans have died from the virus since the pandemic began. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says more than 4.5 million COVID-19 vaccines have been distributed, with over 614,000 doses being administered. 2020 has been a year of many challenges from politics to the coronavirus pandemic. And as 2020 draws to an end, let's take a look back at the year in politics. ABC's Karen Travers reports. Not 2020 began with an impeachment trial. 48 senators have pronounced Donald John Trump, president of the United States, guilty as charged. 52 senators have pronounced him not guilty as charged. The Senate voting to acquit President Trump, the White House calling it a full vindication and exoneration. It worked out. We went through hell unfairly, did nothing wrong. But the celebratory mood at the White House would not last long. The coronavirus crisis that began in China spreading across the world. The president downplaying the potential impact here in the U.S. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Yeah. But it did not. And in mid-March, the presidential campaign, the nation and the world came to an abrupt halt. President Trump put himself front and center in the response to the crisis. Thank you very much. But critics said he did not take it seriously. The president sparking major backlash with baseless claims and junk science. See the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. One minute, and is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? The Democratic presidential race was wide open at the start of 2020, but a massive win in South Carolina propelled Joe Biden to victories on Super Tuesday, clinching him the Democratic nomination. Just a few days ago, the press and the pundits had declared the campaign dead. <laughs> And then came South Carolina, and they had something to say about it. Even as he ramped up campaigning in the fall, Biden held fewer in-person events and limited crowd size to comply with COVID-19 restrictions. And we are going to win four more years in the White House. 
while President Trump rallied jam-packed crowds of supporters, very few people wearing masks. Looming large over the presidential race, the nationwide reckoning over racial injustice, the death of George Floyd sparking outrage and massive demonstrations. The first presidential debate was messy and contentious. I'm here to call out his lies. Everybody knows he's a liar. But you I just agree. want to make sure. Joe, you're the liar. I, I, I. But that was quickly forgotten. With the president announcing just two days later, he and the first lady had tested positive for COVID-19. In the middle of all the campaign frenzy, the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. President Trump quickly nominating Amy Coney Barrett. Dr. Anthony Fauci later calling that announcement event in the Rose Garden a COVID-19 super spreader event. More than two dozen people who attended contracting the virus. Senate Republicans moved quickly to confirm Barrett, shifting the balance of power on the Supreme Court to the right, perhaps for decades. In the final push to Election Day, the COVID-19 pandemic was front and center. Donald Trump has waved the white flag, abandoned our families and surrendered to this virus. Other than the fake news wants to scare everybody, we are absolutely rounding the corner. In the end, the election wasn't all that close. Biden built back the so-called blue wall, winning Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. He also flipped Arizona and Georgia on his way to winning by more than 7 million votes, 306 electoral college votes to President Trump's 232. Senator Kamala Harris making history, the first woman and woman of color to serve as vice president. They've delivered us a clear victory, a convincing victory, a victory for we the people. But President Trump refused to accept the results. The president for weeks making baseless claims about election fraud and pressuring Republican legislators to intervene and overturn the results. President Trump's legal team and its allies losing at least 50 cases in court, including two losses in the Supreme Court. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. San Antonio Spurs regular season starts tonight against the Memphis Grizzlies. If you want to know all things Spurs, we've got you covered. You can sign up for the free Spurs newsletter, and our RJ Marcus has a closer look at what you'll get when you sign up. Good morning, everybody. This is RJ Marquez, and I just wanted to remind you about our free Spurs newsletter, which officially relaunched this week as the Silver and Black get ready for the 2020-2021 regular season. That's right, we are here, and we have got you covered with some of the latest news and analysis from the team. You're gonna to get to hear from Coach Pop, his thoughts on all things Spurs, and also get to hear from some of the players as well. We have a power rankings pulse. We have a scheduled look ahead. We also have a round ball round table which includes Greg Simmons, Larry Ramirez, David Sears, and myself sort of breaking down that week's action. Maybe get a prediction or two as we get ready for what should be a pretty interesting new Spurs regular season. And we also got some great off the court stuff as well. Fiesta jerseys, we're gonna figure out when those are gonna be debuted here in the Alamo City. And also, we have got some pretty cool stuff when it comes to Manu Ginobili. Where in the world is Manu Ginobili? That is one of the segments. Where else are you gonna get a weekly newsletter that follows Manu Ginobili's uh, every move? Because we love Manu, he's one of the greats. Anyways, all you have to do is go to ksat.com, make sure you subscribe, and uh, you will get this newsletter to your inbox every week. This is RJ Marcus. Hopefully you guys have a great week and happy holidays. Just into our newsroom, we have an update on a shooting we've been reporting all morning long. The medical examiner confirming one of the teens involved in the shooting over on Remolino on the west side has died. The victim, 19-year-old Jose Ortega, will bring you the latest information as it becomes available online and, of course, in our later newscasts. And time now is 640 and 65 degrees for now. Wildfires and COVID-19. One woman takes on both to keep her business, her town, and the people in it going. We have details next. Across the country, small businesses are drastically being affected by the COVID-19 economic crisis and out of that, natural disasters. Many as 100,000 storefronts have been permanently shut, but as Devin Clark shows us, one community has managed to rally through by investing in itself. The legendary region of Napa Valley is starting to come back to life and it's due in part to the ingenuity of this woman, Bonnie Meyer. I naturally want to give back to my community. Meyer, best known as one of the former co-owners of the iconic winery Silver Oak Cellars, is now making an impact with regenerative investing. Forbes called her a pioneer for her contributions in solar, a forest, and schools in Africa. It's looking at 
and investing in companies that actually are restoring something. Her small farm was a genesis for restoring local restaurants and a grocery store. All of their employees could come in and have free vegetables. And, and so we asked their staff if some of them would like to come in and work in the garden. Investing in my local businesses by helping them. What I've come to realize about Bonnie is she's very generous, not only with her resources, but with her time and with her mind. Bonnie says giving back to our community is something we can all do just by buying local. I want to see all these businesses survive. Folks like Bonnie, they are leaders in the community on what is possible that we can do for each other. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Time check, 645, 65 degrees. Let's go ahead and check back with Officer Nick Solis. Yes, Dev, look at the screen there. Three accidents all around the city right now. We have another one that came out on Wurzbach Road, but let's get to these accidents here. So this one just came out, West Loop 1604, the Axis Road right there at US Highway 151. It looks like this is a road over act vehicle. Um, one vehicle accident though, but just keep that in mind for heading that way. Still dealing with this one, loop 1604 at 37, another rolled over vehicle. So roadways are dangerous right now, a little damp as Justin's gonna tell you, please be careful. Two hands on the steering wheel, still dealing with this accident, northbound I-35 at Eisenhower Road, four vehicles there and traffic flow is down to 11 miles an hour right now. Expect a delay if you are heading northbound 35. All right, Nick, thank you very much. Real quick on a personal note, I go on Christmas vacation after today. Uh, Nick's last day doing traffic for us is next Wednesday, the 31st. So I want to take a quick sec and thank Nick for everything he's done. I know you've been a part of our morning show family for just a very brief time, but thank you, thank you, thank you, Nick. I'm yes. gonna miss you so much. Yeah, I'm gonna miss you too, Mark. It was an honor working with you, my friend. Amen, and uh, we, of course, will stay in touch. Yes. And then, Justin, you have a disco back there. What's going yeah, on? Just, um, I was going to step over this way. I think we're having some time. And we're just going to jump right in the weather. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, 59 degrees uh, in Dallas, 65 right now in San Antonio. That's uh, some warm temperatures that we're seeing here in South Texas. Some of the warmest weather across the entire country you'll find right here in South Texas this morning. And that's because we have quite a bit of moisture surging and we have some mist and drizzle out there, too. So just a heads up, if you're going to be out and about this morning, it's it's a little damp out there as we thought it may be. Uh, there's cold front that will be shifting in a little bit later tonight. That brings about changes and it will bring some gusty winds. If you look at those numbers up there across the Rocky Mountains, 15 right now, Casper 25 in Denver. Here is the setup. We've got some snow up across the plains, pretty heavy snow. In fact, that's with the upper level low. That's moving away, but it is dragging some cold air down behind it and uh, that's what we're going to feel here in South Texas as we get into tonight, tomorrow and especially Christmas morning. It's going to be chilly. Uh, the radar doesn't give us much, but keep in mind we don't pick up on that drizzle. So it is out there, the mist and drizzle here across the city. 65 right now and cloudy at the airport officially. South Southwesterly winds at about 7 and visibility still doing OK. We've got enough of a breeze here maybe where Fog hasn't really settled in. We still could see some of that in Pleasanton. We've just seen that number drop down to about two and a half miles. Uh, Kennedy's down about three miles. Bevo about half a mile. And uh, Del Rio continues to see some pretty thick fog down about a quarter of a mile there for you. Temperatures in the 60s for the most part. 64 Austin, 66 in New Braunfels, 62 Uvalde. Just extremely warm. This is well above average for this time of year. And uh, the humidity is just way up there too. To see dew points in the 60s late December. It's pretty impressive. Uh, the wind gust forecast. Remember, we have that front coming through this evening. When that happens, gusts are going to really jump up out of the north. Anywhere from 40 to even 45 miles per hour. That's possible overnight. It's a small window, but uh, things like inflatables in your yard, decorations, Christmas decorations, make sure they're tied down uh, because uh, we we could see some of that uh, blow away. OK, uh, Wind gusts tomorrow morning, wind chills. It's going to feel like it's in the 20s in a lot of spots. Uh, 27 in San Antonio, that could be your potential feel. That feels like temperature with those very gusty winds and those colder numbers uh, coming in. So it's going to be very, very different tomorrow morning compared to this morning. Forecast calls for those clouds to eventually clear out. Our front's through, I'd say, about dinner time, and then uh, we clear out behind it. Uh, with those very strong winds uh, forecast for today up to 76 for high. It'll be a warm one um, and then tonight very different 34 
with uh, northerly winds 20 to 30, gusting to 40. Uh, tomorrow, 58 and sunny. We get down to 30 Christmas morning. Santa, uh, Santa's going to love the cold air, I think. 65 uh, for a high on Friday. It does warm up some. A few sprinkles on Saturday with some added cloud cover. It warms up on Sunday and some more rain chances middle part of next week. Guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Nice Christmas weather. Right now it is 6.50. Tomorrow on GMSA, the story of a woman who went from cooking in a village in Chinatown without electricity or running water to being known as one of the best chefs in the U.S. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the latest on the breaking news overnight. President Trump putting that massive $900 billion relief package on hold, demanding Congress increase those $600 checks to $2,000. What it means for millions of Americans waiting for that critical aid with Christmas just two days away. We'll have the latest on that, plus much more only on GMA. We'll see you all soon. A shooting victim took matters into his own hands when it comes to getting help. But San Antonio police say they are still on the case. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police are trying to find out who shot that man and where it happened. Now, they initially found out about this shortly before 10 last night when the man showed up at a gas station near Interstate 37 and Southeast Military. Police say he was suffering from a gunshot wound in his arm, but they say it seems he made his own tourniquet to help stop the bleeding. Then they say he suddenly jumped back into his car and drove himself to a hospital. Well, that man had to be taken to a trauma center later by ambulance. And again, police still don't know who shot him or where it happened. Reporting from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, everyone, just dealing with these accidents right here. Just to keep in mind, West Loop 1604 at 151, a rollover vehicle accident. This one here, another rollover, Loop 1604 at 37. And this accident here, where traffic's getting a little bit better, flow going to 48 miles an hour now, northbound 35 at Eisenhower. Justin? Thank you, sir. We're still in the mid 60s right now. It's a warm, muggy morning. We've got uh, drizzle. We've got some fog out there. Uh, temperatures will get up to 76 today, and we'll see some of those clouds eventually clear out, turning windy tonight, much colder, uh, starting off at 34 tomorrow morning, 58 uh, for high tomorrow, and then down to 30 Christmas morning, a freeze with a high of 65 on Christmas Day. A little bit more cloud cover over the weekend, but some big changes tonight. Uh, keep that in mind. If, uh, if you have plans to be outside, it turns very, very windy uh, and much different for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We may get some rain chances, by the way, down the line uh, next week, guys. It's good for Santa, though. It is good for Santa. So don't forget to, you know, uh, protect some of those plants, bring the pets inside, and leave some cookies for Santa. For, for tomorrow morning especially. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Justin, while we stay on this extended forecast, any idea how 2021 is looking so far climate wise? Uh, well, that's a good question. We're still the <laughs> we're digging deep, man. We're, uh, <laughs> uh, we're, we're in a La Nina, so it's still probably going to stay fairly dry as we get into January of next year. We need some rain, so let's hope we get it next week. You did your best. <laughs> All right, everybody, if I don't see you at nine, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. All right. Bye, guys. Have a great day.